So some time ago, at least by the time I released this video, I uploaded this video right here. And I got some comments, perhaps somewhat jokingly, asking me when procedurally generated metalcore comes. I didn't pay that idea much attention right away. I only answered that it would be fun. And I genuinely felt like it could be fun. But doing that would take a lot of time, and I was already knee deep in trying to finish some other projects. But then one late night, I got a sudden burst of inspiration, started coding, and wrote what would be the first of a couple of algorithms for this genre. It sounds like this. So yeah, for those that are new here, hi, I'm Dennis. I make procedurally generated music, mainly of the gent and progressive metal variety. If you want to hear that in action, you can click in the upper right corner. Anyways, so if you want to know how the gosh darn heck this works, I'll leave a couple of videos I've done in the past explaining the process in the description. But the short version is, imagine you have a friend. This friend is extremely technically proficient at all the instruments, but also lacks any form of imagination. So we need to help our friend here reach their final form. And in order to do that, we need to explain in painful detail how to actually play some of this stuff. The metaphor here being, our friend is my computer, and the painful detail on how to compose and play stuff is the code I'll have to write. And don't worry if you're not a programmer, I will not delve into the actual code, and I'll try to make this make sense for just about anyone. With that said, let's dig into how I would go about generating some good old-fashioned metalcore right now. So let's start with a really traditional metalcore riff. We can take inspiration from this part in my 10 levels of metalcore video. I played around a bit and came up with a set of rules that our friend can follow. So yeah, let's do a form of quickfire round. First off, the riff alternates between what I call low notes and high notes. Every riff starts with two low notes. It doesn't actually have to be that way technically, but it stems from me being in a band more than 10 years ago, being really into the metalcore music of the time, and getting comments on how every riff I wrote starts with two palm muted open notes on the lowest string, and then alternating between that and riffing on the 5th, 7th and 8th fret on the higher strings, and I thought it would be funny to mimic that here. Secondly, there can't be more than two low notes or high notes in a row. Before the riff is created, it randomizes one of two modes for the low notes. Either it's all zeros, or the low notes moves around a bit. If the second mode is chosen, I also randomize how often the current low note changes. And for the high notes, it just grabs random notes from the current scale, but an octave up. And so I run that algorithm two times, each time generating two bar loop. Then I copy-paste those two loops, but force the last two notes of the now fourth loop to be newly randomized high notes. Then I copy-paste those four loops, but force the last four notes of the now eighth loop to be newly randomized high notes. This creates a balanced sense of familiarity, while still throwing in some new stuff from time to time. Then I randomize what I call the harmony mode. It can either be that the whole riff has no harmonies at all, the harmonies come in halfway through the riff, or that the whole riff has harmonies. And for the drums, it randomizes between a couple of really traditional drum beats. I actually googled a bit, and at least according to some people, the first possible drum beat is called a vulture beat. Don't know if that's like an official name or anything, but it's just alternating between the kick and the snare, playing a double kick every other time, and also playing on the ride or the hi-hat with a couple of accent crashes thrown in here and there. The other drum beat is just a very traditional blast beat, with the kick and snare playing in unison, with some cymbal playing either in unison with the kick and snare or every other. So with this in mind, let's listen to a couple of the sections generated following these rules. So now you can probably hear how the riff is constructed and its constraints. Writing these algorithms is always a balance act of leaving enough freedom to allow the program to surprise you with new and fresh ideas, but not so much freedom that it generates an unintelligible mess of random notes. I think this strikes a fair balance between that. 
But anyway, let's move on. We need some form of chorus. The chorus can be real simple. Just mash some power chords that fit into the current scale and call it a day. Kinda. So I'll employ kind of a similar process as the previous riff. First and foremost, the power chords will be struck in a 16th note fashion. I'll randomize how often our friend switches the current chord. And I'll start by randomizing four different power chords taken from the current scale. Then I'll copy paste those four power chords, but randomize a new chord for the eighth one. Then I'll copy paste those eight power chords, but randomize two new power chords at the end. Again, to create a balanced sense of familiarity, while still throwing in some new stuff from time to time. And for the drums, let's go with a traditional upbeat drum beat, kind of similar to this part in my 10 levels of metalcore video. So the snare is always on the upbeat, with some form of cymbal every 8th note. The kicks can play in the empty spaces where there are no snare, with a small chance of it generating a double kick at the space right in front of the snare. And let's throw in a chance of it overlaying another drum beat as well, with the snare on the third and kicks syncopated with the rhythm guitar. So let's listen to what that might sound like real quick. Sounds okay-ish. You know what it needs? A lead guitar. So let's once again take inspiration from my 10 levels of metalcore video and do something based on this tapping part right here. So let's break down that part and let's see if we can't figure out how to explain to a computer how to play something similar. First off, the left hand plays two notes in a power chord formation, followed by the right hand playing a high note. That goes on for five repetitions, with the last repetition adding an extra high note played by the right hand at the end. So that's our structure right there. The left hand will stay mostly stationary, maybe switching the position of the power chord formation from time to time, with the right hand playing some high notes an octave up. So I'll generate one of these loops, then I copy paste that loop, but randomize two new notes at the end of the second loop. Then I copy paste those four loops, but add two new high notes at the end of the fourth loop. Then I copy paste those four loops, but at the end of the eighth loop, I add four newly randomized high notes to keep it fresh, but still feeling like it has an actual structure. And together with the chorus rhythm section, it sounds like this. Sounds kinda sweet. But alright, I think the last thing we need is a big breakdown. So let's one last time take inspiration from my 10 levels of metalcore video and do something based on this breakdown part here. So for this one, the rhythm guitar will just play muted open string 16th note power chords for the whole section, with some double 30 second notes thrown in here and there. I'll employ the same strategy of generating two loops, then copy pasting those, but adding some variations to the fourth loop, then copy pasting those and adding some more variations to the eighth loop, and so on. The drums will just follow the bass and the rhythm guitar with kicks and overlay some cymbals and snares. Let's listen to what this delicious breakdown sounds like. And now I just want to share two small other things I added as well. First up, a metalcore song isn't complete without a classic metalcore drum feel. So for the feels in the songs now, they are set up in a very simple way. All 30 second notes, starting with playing either on the snare or one of the toms. Playing either two or four hits on it before moving on to the kick. The kick is always played with two hits. And then it loops back, picking something to play with the hands for two or four hits. Then hitting the kick two times. And that's how the feels are generated. Secondly, every metalcore song needs a section with just a big open string power chord. So I added that as an intro and as an outro. But alrighty then, the time has come. 
It's time for the feature presentation. Let's string together everything we have written together and see if our friend can generate a fully complete metalcore song for us. Let's go! That's one complete metalcore song, written by a computer. Our friend definitely needed some guidance along the way. But I feel confident in their ability to go off and write hundreds of new, albeit similar, songs from here on out. But alright, that's it for this video everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, there's probably another video on the screen that's up your alley. And for those unaware, I set up a Patreon fairly recently, where I have started sharing sneak peeks of the development of this project, as well as other projects, to my Patreons. So if you want to partake in enabling my nonsense and get some early looks on what I'm working on, head over to my Patreon and sign up. See you in the next video.